Welcome back, mitochondriacs, to another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we are going to continue our in-depth discussion about the inhibition of the amino acid glutamine that is aberrantly uptaked by cancer cells. And we have had a chance to now discuss several glutamine inhibitors. That would be Dawn, EGCG, curcumin, berberine, and milk thistle. But today, we're going to finish out talking about a couple other substances that are well known that have effects on glutamine uptake. And we're going to start out with quercetin. So let's get into it. So this paper is titled quercetin overcomes colon cancer cells resistance to chemotherapy by inhibiting solute carrier family one member five transporter. And that's also known as SLC one a five. And if you remember back from several of the other compounds we've talked about, whether it be berberine or silybenin, they block this SLC1A5 as well. And that's exactly where quercetin has its action also. So in this paper, it says the metabolomic studies based on this UPLC MSMS analysis revealed that quercetin could reverse the multidrug resistance by significantly blocking D-glutamine and D-glutamate metabolism. And the underlying mechanism is that quercetin downregulated the expression of the glutamine transporter solute carrier family one membrane five SLC1A5 in these colon cancer cells. And this is the first time to report that quercetin was an SLC1A5 inhibitor, which could be served as a template compound to potentially develop novel, aka drugs, that block these uptake channels to reverse the multidrug resistant forms of cancer. And this is a little bit different graphic than what we've seen in the past, but essentially we have the SLC1A5 transporter that brings in glutamine and allows glutamine to, to take place in the aberrant metabolism of cancer cells, and that is being blocked by quercetin here. In the next paper titled, Quercetin Induces Ferroptosis in Gastric Cancer Cells by Targeting SLC1A5 and Regulating the PCAMP2, PDRP1, and NRF GPX4 axes. It says that in conclusion, quercetin targets SLC1A5 in gastric cancer cells, inhibiting the NRF2 CT pathway, activating the PCAM2 DRP1 pathway, and accelerating iron deposition. Ultimately, quercetin promotes ferroptosis in gastric cancer cells, inhibiting gastric cancer progression. Overall, our study reveals that quercetin can potentially impede gastric cancer progression by targeting SLC1A5, offering novel therapeutic avenues through the modulation of ferroptosis and iron homeostasis. And it's interesting because this is a topic that we have not had a chance to really cover in great detail, the idea of ferroptosis. And maybe many of you have been exposed to the word ferroptosis through Jane McClellan's book, How to Starve Cancer and, and Kill It with Ferroptosis. But essentially what ferroptosis is, is utilizing iron as a weapon. And iron is highly susceptible to reactive oxygen species. And the way that cancer cells in general are preventing that from happening is through the NRF2 overactivation and the excess creation of glutathione peroxidase and glutathione and the sequestration of iron. So when we block SLC1A5 by various methods, whether it be quercetin, berberine, or simularin, the things we've covered so far, we're going to induce ferroptosis, which is going to halt tumor progression, in this case, gastric cancer, and the last slide colon cancer. And just because I want to keep a very similar graph used for whatever agent we're talking about so we can, you know, have an understanding of where these things are acting. So as we've seen in the past, other agents such as berberine, such as simularin or silybenin, quercetin also acts on this SLC1A5 pathway, which inhibits glutamine from being uptaked, at least one of the ways it's being uptaked, and participating in the glutamine to glutamate transfer, the creation of extra glutathione, and its other participation in nucleotide amino acid and lipid synthesis. The next thing I want to cover is more of a nomenclature problem because what is also seen in the literature is that this SLC1A5 is also known as ASCT2. And if you don't know how to search for ASCT2, then you'll miss that this is actually talking about this SLC1A5 amino acid transporter. And when you start searching for things like resveratrol and it's talking about its glutamine inhibiting effect, it's going to use things like ASCT2 
as the transporter you're talking about, you're going to have no idea what they're, what they're talking about. So in this paper titled resveratrol enhances cisplatin induced apoptosis, cisplatin is a powerful chemotherapeutic in human hepatoma cells via glutamine metabolism inhibition. And it says our study showed that resveratrol enhances cisplatin toxicity in human hepatoma cells via an apoptosis dependent mechanism. Further, Studies show that resveratrol decreases the absorption of glutamine and glutathione content by reducing the expression of glutamine transporter ASCT2. And further on, it says that collectively, our study suggests that resveratrol may sensitize human hepatoma cells to cisplatin chemotherapy via glutamine metabolism inhibition. Pretty cool. Now we have another tool in our tool bag that can block glutamine, right? And as we can see here, using the same, you know, classic picture that I've been trying to show people, and we're going to see that this SLC1A5, aka this ASCT2 transporter is being blocked by resveratrol as well. So many compounds we have now covered that are natural that can block this key glutamine uptake transporter, SLC1A5. I want to finish this lecture by talking very quickly about these other transporters, this SLC38A1 and SLC6A14. As you can see here, there are two substances that are known that can block these two transporters, this MEAIB and this alpha-MT. So I did a literature search and I tried to find information about those things. So the first thing, alpha-MT, stands for alpha-methyltryptamine, which unfortunately is a hallucinogenic psychoactive compound, a stimulant tryptamine, that is involved in several overdose fatalities in the United States and Europe. So it's pretty much a non-starter for us in terms of a use as a therapeutic and getting it will be impossible because it's a scheduled medication for the DEA. So there's, there's no way to get it. But it, is, it was the only thing that I could find in the literature that has been shown to block the SLCA14 pathway. And just to be clear, it's this alpha-MT blocking this SLC6A14 pathway, this alpha-methyltryptamine. Second, I wanted to discuss quickly the SLC38A1, and it has a role in human melanoma cells. This is the only paper I could find on it. But when it was blocked, there showed improvement. And when it says here that although cancer cells can synthesize glutamine de novo, aka make its own glutamine, most cancer cells show an increased uptake in glutamine from the tumor microenvironment 10 to 30 times more than normal cells. And this SLC381, a member of the sodium neutral amino acid transporter SNAT family, plays an essential role during major net import of glutamine. In the study, we revealed that a significant upregulation of SNAT1 expression in human melanoma tissue in comparison to healthy epidermis and an increased SNAT expression level in human melanoma cell lines when compared to normal human melanocytes. We demonstrate that the inhibition of SNAT1, this SLC38A1, with alpha-methylamino isobutyric acid, also known as MEAIB, which you can see why they would use that because it's a very long name, as well as SIRNA mediated downregulation reduces cancer cell growth, cell migration, invasion, and leads to induction of senescence in melanoma cells, aka it stops the cancer cells in its tracks. So I do believe that this SLC38A1 is a, a powerful target for future endeavors, but the only thing I could find in the medical literature as a whole that could block it is this chemical. And there is no real studies on this chemical for even mouse or rat or human studies on this. So this is a to be determined, but it seems like these are two untapped targets that we could have in our repertoire to effectively block glutamine from being utilized by cancer cells. Now I'm going to end on this SLC 7A11. This is going to be a multi-part series because the next video I'm going to go into the critical importance of SLC 7A11. And then I'm going to talk about several of the SLC7A11 inhibitors. And of that, there are many. And on this list, you're going to see sulfasalazine and some other medications. The only one that would be probably useful for our purposes is probably sulfasalazine. But lucky for us, with the adequate literature search, I was able to find many SLC7A11 or 7A11 inhibitors that are natural. So we're going to go over those in great detail. So if I have not made yet a good case for glutamine being a wonderful target for the metabolic approach to cancer. Hopefully at this point, by looking at all these different transporters and all these different substances that block it and showing efficacy, that that is truly a winning strategy. That being said, I want to give an exhaustive review of all of the known transporter blockers as well as enzyme blockers that we can find in the literature. 
And we're going to start next time by looking at the next transporter in question. If you like videos like this, please like it. If you have anybody in your life that could utilize this information and it could be beneficial to them, please share it with them. And until next time.